The 2020 National Architecture Awards are proudly supported by Bluescope, Brickworks, Endulux, Lysart, Fielders, and Bondor, Built Environment Channel, Planned Cover, and Architecture Media. Good evening and welcome to the 2020 National Architecture Awards. I'm Viv O'Connell and I'm delighted to be your host this evening as we come together on lands across Australia to celebrate the work of the Institute's members. And to begin with an acknowledgement of country, I would like to introduce Matthew Maguire, Wadjuk Elder of the Noongar Nation. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honour to welcome you to the National Architects Award for 2020. This is a land that we have occupied for thousands of years and a land that we will occupy for thousands of years to come. My children, your children, all travelling and walking as one. And you know, I'm going to get my mom and get them 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 and I ask that my old people's spirits can be part of this evening tonight with you all, that you have a wonderful evening and then safe travels home to your own homes and families later on, wherever that may be in this wonderful nation. I would like to share this song with you, ladies and gentlemen. It's about driving away bad spirits to allow good spirits to come in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening this evening and God bless. Thank you, Matthew. And I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of land across Australia and pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. Well, this evening is the culmination of the Australian Institute of Architects 2020 Awards Program and the 10th live streamed awards event this year. If you're joining us for the first time, each of the projects that received an award in the state, territory and international awards in the middle of the year have been considered by the National Jury for a National Architecture Award this evening. We are, of course, coming to you live tonight and we have a very big night ahead. We'll be hearing from the jurors, some members, some clients and, of course, crossing to the winners of the named awards, the highest honour in each of the categories. So, if your project is on the shortlist and you've given us your Skype details, please keep an eye out for our call as we'd love to have a chat. And timing tonight is tight. And now to get underway, I'd like to hand over to the Australian Institute of Architects National President, Alice Hansen. Architecture holds the potential to transform lives. As a child, I visited my grandparents' apartment in Amsterdam in an extraordinary structure that appeared to grow from the curb in a dark brown brick that deceptively shrouded any of the magnificence beyond the street front confection of projecting windows, arch stooped, vaulted communal courtyard entry and twin roof pavilions. Later I discovered it was one of the first apartment buildings in Amsterdam and the work of F.A. Warners who pioneered the concept of housing by public limited company and built along the lines of unity in diversity. That experiential encounter sealed the fate that has led me to you tonight, and with a deep love of architecture, the profession and the institute. I am greatly disappointed that I've not been able to meet with you 
our members, nor our sponsors, nor our greater architectural community in person since having taken up the presidency in late July. I'm what I like to call the last of the Institute's first run of a trilogy of female presidents. A night such as tonight focuses our attention on architecture, architects, awards and rewards. Culturally recognising architecture and architects has long been the pursuit of historians. Unlike many professions, the community and our civilization lead their quotidian existence amongst our work. Not only that of those who came before us, but the architectural works of our own time and making. A long tradition of honouring architects within the Commonwealth was via imperial honours. In the UK, many of my personal favourites, Sir Christopher Wren, Sir John Soane, Sir Edwin Lutyens, were so honoured. The making and founding of our own institutes and the RIAA were speckled by names adorned with knighthoods, such as Sir Redmond Barry, our only barrister president, who also delivered the first ever lecture on architecture in Australia, but is better known in Australian histories for being the judge to send Ned Kelly down to the gallows. Although sadly, amongst those knights, there are no dames. Perhaps the form of honour in greatest circulation consists of architects depicted on a country's banknote. Aside from rulers and dictators, architects are astonishingly one of the best represented professions. Over 20 architects have been recognised this way, including Christopher Wren, who is worth 50 English pounds, Alvo Alto, worth 50 Finnish marks, Victor Horta in Belgium, worth 2,000 francs, Jose Pleschner from the Czech Republic, worth a curious 500 tola, Gustave Eiffel, worth 200 French francs, Le Cabousier, Interestingly, though, not honoured in France, where he practised, but Switzerland, where he was born, and worth a mere 10 Swiss francs. Otto Wagner, for 500 Austrian shillings. Charles René Mackintosh, worth 100 British pounds, but only in Scotland. Bernini, designer of the columns of St Peter's in Rome, worth 50,000 Italian lira, which sounds like a lot, but was barely enough to buy a small confection to go with your cappuccino. Our own equivalent was Francis Greenway, who used to appear on our $10 paper note. Perhaps there is a reason why he was replaced with Banjo Patterson when we changed to the supposedly unforgeable plastic notes. Greenway, apart from being an architect, is the world's only convicted forger ever to be recognised on a banknote. Whilst one hopes and expects that another Australian architect will be similarly honoured before too long, I'm not going to court controversy by suggesting who it should be. But with five denominations of notes to choose between, there should be room for a female brutalist and a postmodern architect. In one manner, community appreciation of the architecture we make is reward enough for many architects, and yet the Institute's architectural awards attest to our profession's inventiveness, imagination, multiplicity for all the Australian public to see. I'd like to acknowledge and thank everyone involved in putting this program together, the hundreds of members who take part in the peer review, the 2020 jury chair and immediate past president, Professor Helen Lockhead, as well as her peers on the national jury, and all the jury chairs and jurors at chapter and regional levels the devoted institute staff and the clients, without whose foresight and trust none of this could happen. It is a true community that brings this program to life each year. On behalf of us all, I'd like to thank our generous sponsors who have stood by our side this year and for the many years prior. Principal partner, Blue Scope Colour Bond. Major national partners, Dulox and Brickworks. National corporate partners, Bondor, Lysart and Fielders, Supporting Partner, Built Environment Channel, National Insurance Partner, Planned Cover, and National Media Partner, Architecture Media. In conclusion, 
I've mentioned FA Warner's aphorism, unity and diversity. This could be equally applied to tonight's awards, which reflect a unity of talent, dedication and commitment across the diversity of building types, project scales and clients. Thanks, Alice. The first announcement this evening is the National Emerging Architect Prize, which recognises an individual or collaboration's contribution to architectural practice, education, design excellence and community involvement, advancing the profession's role within the public arena. Each of the state and territory prize recipients was considered for the National Emerging Architect Prize. And they are Sarah Lebner from the ACT, Matthias Hollenstein from New South Wales, Ellen Buttrose from Queensland, Erin Crowden from South Australia, Pippa Jensen from Tasmania, Tom McKenzie from Victoria, and Sandy Angie from Western Australia. The jury was chaired by Alice Hampson and she was joined by fellow jurors Rodney Eggleston, Director of March Studio and the 2019 National Emerging Architect Prize winner, and Ksenia Tortoyeva, Associate Director at Tonkin Zulika Greer Architects. And now, without any further ado, the winner of the 2020 National Emerging Architect Prize is... Sarah Lebner from the ACT of Lighthouse Architecture and Science. Sarah exhibits an energy and focus beyond her years. Having joined interdisciplinary practice Lighthouse Architecture and Science soon after graduation, she rose to become Principal Architect within two years. Sarah's generous vision of an architecture for the masses is underpinned by her dedication to climate change responsiveness. She aims to simplify sustainable design and make it part of the mainstream for home builders. Sarah's desire to give back to the profession is also reflected in her commitment to arming young architects with industry knowledge. Congratulations, Sarah Lebner. And I am joined now by Sarah Lebner herself. Congratulations, Sarah. How's it going? Oh, thank you so much. I'm just totally blown away. Um, you know, it's such a lovely thing to receive a state award, but um, being recognised nationally, honestly, just never even crossed my mind. And it's a few months since we last spoke. I think you were in regional New South Wales last time. Whereabouts are you tonight? Yeah, look, I'm back in Canberra. Um, I've just heard squeals from the lounge room. Some of my friends, architecture friends, are here celebrating with me. Um, so that's really nice. You know, there's so many people that have mentored and supported me. Um, along the way and uh, as I said last time you know it's just thanks to anyone that builds a career we, we don't do it in isolation people help us get to where we are and yeah hope I can pay it forward. Well um, now I understand that you've been doing quite a lot for the profession recently and you've just launched a book a couple of days ago is that right? Yes um, the official launch yeah 101 things I didn't learn in architecture school um, yeah, look, my career, I've, I've always just tried to be the change that I want to see in the industry. Um, and, you know, we all have days where we, I guess we doubt whether anyone gets what we're doing. But um, this is just such huge proof and encouragement, I guess, that um, some people do. And I'm so grateful for that. And I hope it inspires others to be brave about how they practice in this time that we live in. Oh, wonderful. And uh, I just need to ask, how are you celebrating tonight? You've got a few people over? Yes, a small group, some old colleagues, um, uni friends, um, people that I've worked with. Um, yeah, just a small group who have shared some of the journey with me. Oh, well, look, that is absolutely wonderful. I will leave you to enjoy the rest of the celebrations, but congratulations once again. Have a great night. Thank you so much. We're at the ACT chapter, and you're watching the National Architecture Awards. And now to the main awards categories. More than 800 projects were entered in the awards program this year, and a total of 180 projects, those that received a state, territory or international award, were considered by the national jury. 
So to give us some insights into the judging process, I'd like to hand over to the 2020 National Awards Jury Chair and the Institute's immediate past president, Professor Helen Lockhead. Thanks Viv. Hello everyone. Judging the National Architecture Awards provides a unique opportunity to experience the year's best projects from across Australia, and this year was no exception. Sadly, due to COVID-19 travel restrictions, we had to undertake virtual site tours this year, and while an on-screen experience is no replacement for reality, it was impressive how well all adapted to these changed conditions to showcase their work. It was a demanding 10-day program for the jury, comprising Kerry Clare, Jenny Officer, Jeeva Greenway and Tim Greer, adeptly managed by Lauren Craddock from the Institute. A big thank you to you all for your professionalism, astute insights and good humour. This year, we visited some 76 projects across Australia. Projects at this level are all accomplished, but projects that could demonstrate their value beyond the limits of the brief or the confines of the site were those we selected for national recognition. The site tours enable the jury to meet and hear from architects and see projects in an array of climatic conditions animated with people. Few were filled with people this year, but an upside was an ability to transcend the tyranny of distance and visit each award category in a day, giving the jury a unique window to compare project types. Drawings available at our fingertips on screen and presenters, clients and end users beaming in from different locations were also unexpected benefits. In all, 44 projects were recognised, 25 with national awards and 19 with commendations. It is worth noting that in three categories, the named awards were shared. This is both a testament to the calibre of this year's projects, but also an acknowledgement that without the benefit of a physical site visit, it was not always possible for the jury to be absolutely definitive in our decisions when the distinctions are fine or the field especially varied. Some particular highlights this year included adaptive reuse projects that proved transformative for both the place and the user experience, projects that retuned typologies providing new to design paradigms, and great collaborations that pushed architects to excel. It was also encouraging to see recurring commitment to social and environmental sustainability and housing projects of all types challenging expectations and delivering high quality buildings imbued with amenity and delight even with tight budgets. Plus, educational and public projects were imaginative design created both inspired and inspiring spaces. The National Architecture Awards celebrate the creative capacities of our profession and the enduring value that outstanding architecture brings to people's lives. So on behalf of the jury, I thank all the architects and their clients for so generously giving us their time and sharing their experiences with these remarkable places. We warmly congratulate all of the winners in this year's awards. Thanks, Helen. The first category is commercial architecture, where the jury considered 12 projects and shortlisted five. And to tell us a bit about the jury's deliberations and introduce the shortlist, I'd like to hand over to national juror Tim Greer. Thanks, Viv, and good evening, everyone. Before I mention the quality of the architecture, can I just say how awe-inspiring it was to see how skillful all the contestants were at adapting to the COVID rules. Beaming in from every corner of Australia, you managed endless complexities and showed your work with the professionalism and polish of television presenters. Across the commercial projects this year, we were really impressed by the intent to integrate civic amenity into the buildings so that the general public can enjoy this socially rich architecture. It's the civic ambition that exceeds clients' expectation and really makes architecture relevant in the 21st century. Another strong theme this year was the bold adoption of new technology woven into the buildings with sophistication and finesse, and the inventive use of existing technologies in new ways, which was really impressive. And now, let's take a look at the shortlisted projects. Daramu House by Zahns. Phoenix Central Park by Derbach Block Jaggers and John Wardle Architects. Three Capes Track Lodges by Andrew Burns Architecture. Nine Cremorne Street by Fieldwork. And Lightbox by Claire Cousins Architects. 
great field of projects. And thanks, Tim, for those comments. Well, the jury have awarded three commendations for commercial architecture. The first commendation goes to Three Capes Track Lodges by Andrew Burns Architecture. Congratulations. They have also awarded a commendation to Daramu House by Zahns. Congratulations to the team at Zahns. And the final commendation has been awarded to Nine from Orne Street by Fieldwork. Congratulations, Fieldwork. And the highest honour in this category, the Harry Sadler Award for Commercial Architecture goes to Phoenix Central Park by Durback Block Jaggers and John Wardle Architects. Phoenix Central Park is a project that has risen from the ashes of a vacant warehouse site in Chippendale. Architecture and interior are forged as one under a superb collaboration. The project comprises two intertwined and complementary buildings, each with its own character. Similarly, the program mixes and blurs visual and performing arts for a totally immersive experience. This unparalleled project of garden, gallery and performance has socially, economically and culturally rejuvenated the southern end of the City of Sydney and beyond. Congratulations, Durback Block Jaggers and John Wardle Architects. And I am delighted to be joined now by Camilla, Neil and David. Congratulations. Hi, thank you very much. <laughs> Understated as always. I remember you guys from the New South Wales Awards. <laughs> now, can I ask you, um, how does it feel to receive this honour this evening? Oh, it's just amazing. We're so, so, so happy. Thank you so much. Right. Now, this was a team effort, obviously, with John Wardle, and I know you had quite a lot to say about working with that practice the last time we chatted. Um, for the people watching tonight, what would you like to say about the, uh, the process? You know, there's sort of hundreds of people actually involved in realising something that kind of started off as a weird dream, like, you know, a few years ago. And I guess sometimes it feels like a low-level civil war or a kind of a mauling ruck, but actually compared to what's going on in America, it's a walk in the park. But it's been an amazing experience for all of us. It actually was fantastic to work with John. I mean, John is actually very, very funny. You may not know that from this kind of format, but thank God we share a, a, a sort of sense of humour, and that helps a lot. Wonderful. And uh, David, is there anything that you'd like to say to everyone watching this evening about what it was like to work on this exceptional project? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't join the Skype and not get in on the conversation. <laughs> we would like to thank some people if there's time. Absolutely. I don't know if we have time for that. No, please do. Go um, right ahead. I mean, I guess John, John, we can't thank John, everybody, but we'd love to thank John and John's team, of course, and our team and um, the first builders, Bellevard and FDC, who took over the project, Richard Green, who was our engineer, I mean, there were so many incredible artisans and craftsmen who worked on the job that everybody did their their very best work. And last of all, of course, to Judith, who is really, you know, an exceptional client and an amazingly visionary human being. Wonderful. Well, look, congratulations once again to you and the team on an exceptional project and, of course, to your visionary client as well. And uh, I do hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Larry Alcott, and you're watching the National Architecture Awards. Now to the category of Educational Architecture, where the jury considered the 17 State and Territory award-winning projects and shortlisted nine. Let's take a look at the shortlist. ANU College of Law by Gaida Mosley Brown Architects. Marie Rie Teaching Centre ANU by BVN. MLC School Senior Centre also by BVN. Carlton Learning Precinct, COLA by Law Architects. Ian Potter Southbank Centre, University of Melbourne by John Wardle Architects. 
Monash University Chancellery by ARM Architecture. Monash University Ian Potter Centre for Performing Arts by Peter Elliott Architecture and Urban Design. The Swift Science and Technology Centre by McBride Charles Ryan. And Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. The National Jury have awarded a commendation for educational architecture to Carlton Learning Precinct Cola by Law Architects. Congratulations to Sandy and the team at Law Architects. A national award for educational architecture goes to MLC School Senior Centre by BVN. With a harmonious and successful balance between open collaborative spaces, performance, practical and more traditional spaces, this project enables students to be more self-directed in their learning experience. The simple yet sophisticated facade of the Senior Centre is composed of a full-height, double-glazed, high-performance envelope, which maximises access to daylight. The immediacy of raw concrete is framed throughout, with sharp detailing and the management of natural and artificial light, imparting warmth and delight to this high-quality place of learning. Congratulations, BVN. And a national award for educational architecture also goes to Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. Successfully weaving a bold new campus architecture into the fabric of an historical town centre and with deep connection to Indigenous culture and place, this new health sciences facility defines a benchmark for educational architecture in Western Australia. Embracing environmental and cultural sustainability, the architecture, landscaping and artwork are the result of successful collaboration between the architects, university and local Indigenous community, integrating language and culture to create a project that is unmistakably West Australian, unmistakably Midland and unmistakably Curtin. Congratulations, Lions with Silver Thomas Hanley. And now the highest honour in this category, the Daryl Jackson Award for Educational Architecture goes to Ian Potter Southbank Centre, University of Melbourne by John Wardle Architects. The Ian Potter Southbank Centre is an ingenious arrangement of stacked space that allows a building with a large program to sit comfortably on a constrained site. The necessary solidity of the big box spaces is creatively eroded by cheeky portholes to the street that invite previews of the activity of music rehearsal and performance at the Melbourne Conservatorium of Music. The project has already demonstrated how generosity and richness of materials and detail can heighten the joy of participation in learning. Congratulations, John Wardle Architects. And I'm joined now by Megan Dwyer, John Wardle and the team. Hello guys, how's it going? <laughs> Very well, thank you. We're absolutely delighted, can I tell you? There's been a lot of loud cheering here um, through the announcement, yeah, through all yes. this. Yes, no, I could hear that and that is fantastic. We love it when people are enthusiastic. Um, can you tell us what does it mean to receive the award for this project, Megan? It is an exceptional building. Thank you very much. Um, look, this is a project that's been in our practice one way or another for really quite a long period of time. We did some very early urban design frameworks, etc. Uh, and we've, we've just um, remained very focused and um, committed to, to realising it and, you know, to not only see it sort of built, but to have it recognised uh, like this is um, the, yeah, the best, really terrific. And uh, is there anyone in particular that you'd like to acknowledge, Megan? <laughs> Mm, look, there are quite a few. Um, first of all, we would just um, acknowledge the, the client. The University of Melbourne are really fantastic uh, patrons of uh, local architecture and we're very grateful to their commitment to this project. Um, Alex Lawler, Gary McPherson, Barry uh, Cunningham, there are a number of people who have really been so committed to making this happen. Uh, we uh, would like to thank, you know, Lendlease and their fantastic team of um, subcontractors. A really uh, remarkable build, and and they've achieved such um, high quality with uh, 
again, sort of great enthusiasm for the um, eventual outcome. And uh, the team here, working very closely with John Waddle, Stephen Lee, Kahai Lee, um, and many others, Jeff Arnold, uh, and uh, Minnie Cade, and of course, um, so many others uh, that really did uh, put pen to paper to, to realise this one. Um, so again, thank you very much. We're completely uh, chuffed about this. Oh, excellent. And I can't tell you guys how great it is to see you all in the same room. I think for the Vic Awards, when we chatted to you, <laughs> you were all on a Zoom. So wonderful to see that you can celebrate together. And uh, it would be remiss of me not also to congratulate you on receiving the named award in the previous category, Commercial Architecture. So congratulations again on that score as well. Right, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have a wonderful night, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. And now, two projects that have stood the test of time with the award for Enduring Architecture. And to give some background on this category, national juror and former gold medal recipient, Kerry Clare, has sent through this message. Thanks Viv and good evening everyone. I'm very pleased to introduce the award for Enduring Architecture. It's a category that allows us to reflect on our history and our identity, where we can acknowledge the ideas that have endured ideas that maintain relevance to our lives and our work, and projects that continue to teach us lessons. This year, although we were very restricted in our ability to experience firsthand the diversity of the architectural environments, we were keen as a jury to understand each project's contribution to the fundamental concepts of nurture, shelter, and the enduring importance of place. And now let's have a look at the shortlisted projects. Greenwood House by Ian Slater. Palm Garden House by Richard Laplastrier. Holy Family Church Indrapilly by Douglas and Barnes. Nanyara Chapel by Cheeseman, Dolly, Brabham and Neighbour. Hobart Animal Hospital by Heffernan Nation Reese Viney Architects. MCG Great Southern Stand by Daryl Jackson in association with Tompkins, Shaw and Evans. And Hackett Memorial Buildings by Rodney Alsop and Conrad Sace. Thanks, Kerry. And without any further ado, the National Award for Enduring Architecture goes to Palm Garden House by Richard Leblastrier. Palm Garden House marks a most important moment in Australian housing. Its light cradling of space and absolute immersion in landscape has affected and inspired generations of architects. For 45 years it has nourished its owner, who shares it with the birds, insects and water dragons that inhabit this cool, meandering oasis of garden and water. The play of materials and detail, solidity and fragility, complexity and simplicity is deeply memorable. Palm Garden House is ephemeral yet enduring, complex yet elemental, garden yet house. Congratulations, Richard Laplastrier. And now to urban design. Of the 13 projects that received awards across the states and territories earlier in the year, the jury shortlisted seven. Let's take a look at who's in the running. ANU Cambry Precinct by Lars Nimmo Architects, BVN and Aspect Studios. Campbell's Section 5 Master Plan by Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects. Anzac Memorial Centenary Extension by Johnson Pilton Walker with the Government Architect, New South Wales. CBD and Southeast Light Rail by Grimshaw with Aspect Studios 
in collaboration with the City of Sydney on behalf of Transport for New South Wales, supported by Randwick City Council. Metro Northwest by Hassel, in collaboration with Turpin Crawford Studio and McGregor Westlake Architecture. Bridge of Remembrance by Denton Corker Marshall. And Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Iredell Pedersen Hook Architects. And in this category, the jury have awarded a commendation to Bridge of Remembrance by Denton Corker Marshall. Congratulations, DCM, and a big shout out to Neil Bourne and the team. And a national award for urban design goes to Campbell Section 5 Master Plan by Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects. This is a masterful example of the creation of an integrated community within an existing urban context. Whilst the master plan achieves the intent of a new level of housing density for this location, the ultimate success of the project hinges on the generosity of public domain. Open space is used to mediate between the different densities, whilst the road network acknowledges the existing memorials. Campbell Section 5 has an immediate sense of belonging, having already become a loved and important part of Canberra's urban fabric. Congratulations, Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects. And the highest honour in this category, the Walter Burley Griffin Award for Urban Design goes to Metro Northwest by Hassel, in collaboration with Turpin Crawford Studio and McGregor Westlake Architecture. Sydney's Metro Northwest is an urban transit project at the metropolitan scale, integrating eight new stations and their surrounding public spaces through architecture, landscape and art. The urban strategy unifies the stations along the 36 kilometre corridor with subtle shifts of scale, form, colour and landscape. Each station precinct is uniquely adjusted in response to the local alignment, topography and history, giving meaningful identity to each centre. The result is a richly layered public realm of memorable and uplifting spaces, all seamlessly connected. Congratulations, Hassel, in collaboration with Turpin Crawford Studio and McGregor Westlake Architecture. And I am joined now by Ross Delamotte and the team from Hassel. Congratulations. Such a wonderful recognition. Thank you. Oh, look, absolute pleasure. Now, uh, there was some pretty wild cheering going on there a moment ago when the announcement was made. Who do you have in the room with you tonight? Oh. <laughs> Hill, Hill Thales. I've actually got Philip Thales. <laughs> oh, you do too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, uh, our, my design partner for the, probably the last 20 years, Jeff Crow, is on my uh, left, and Peter McGregor, uh, and we, we want to say a special hello to, uh, to McKaylee. No, that's Jenny. Oh, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to McKaylee, who's, uh, who's up in the mountains camping. So, McKaylee, well done. Well, that's an outstanding incorporation of a missing team member into a live cross. I'm very impressed by the creativity there. Um, now, what would you like us to know about this project, Ross? Oh, goodness. Um, probably the, the first thing would be just its scale. It's quite an extraordinary project, which is actually conceived and built on a regional scale. So it cuts across northwest Sydney. Uh, Jeff and I started work on this back in uh, 2003, I think, so it's been a 17-year journey. And I, I really would like to say a special thank you to Sydney Metro because their brief allowed us to play at the highest level and deliver something quite extraordinary. So to uh, Rod Staples and to Tim Parker and Stephen Spacey in particular, um, they They've created a vision for public transport and place in Australia, which I think is quite extraordinary. And, uh, and we're, we should all be indebted to them for that vision. <clears throat> hear, hear. And does anyone else on the team there uh, want, to have, want to say anything to add to that? I'm putting you on the spot now. Well, I'd like <laughs> to have a chat because it was a wonderful collaboration uh, with Peter and uh, Michaela Crawford. Um. <clears throat> Over to you. Um. <laughs> 
Uh, Michaela and I only came into the project um, uh, 2013, so we only spent five years on it. Um, <laughs> a but, mere trifle. Um, a mere trifle. Um, but it was an amazing project because um, it was really um, a true kind of um, um, kind of integration of, of artistic ideas with engineering and landscape and architecture and urban design. And in, and in fact, we also should thank um, Phil Hockley, who was the engineer in charge of the project, uh, in charge of the design. And <clears throat> it was an amazing moment when he uh, agreed to change all the structures of the underground stations to kind of fit with the idea of the grid of the orchards. So um, without Phil, we wouldn't be here, I don't think. Oh, well. Too right, yes. Excellent. And, well, look, uh, and, and yes. Phil uh, is representing CPB and John Holland, who I think, uh, like many of these projects, the build quality is exceptional under uh, quite enormous pressure. So I think to CPB and John Holland, we give our great, uh, great thanks. And, and also we wouldn't be here without Michaeli and Jenny. Uh, and, uh, you know, who, who were married to the project with us, you know, for the five year duration. And, and, and there's a, a team of probably 200, 250 architects and designers behind us. So there's many hands in this project. Yeah. Peter. So we're, we're really yeah. grateful to the guys. Here they are. Hey. Well, congratulations to you all on a very well-deserved win and a high honour indeed, the Walter Burley Griffin Award for Urban Design. Congratulations once again, and I hope you have a great evening. Oh, we will. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Cheers. And we will be back in just a moment after these messages from the award sponsors. Dulux Wash and Wear for a superior washable finish. If it's worth doing, it's worth Dulux. When it's time to build, build on quality that's proven in Australia's harsh environment. Build on Lysart steel roofing and walling. Style. Experience. Excellence. You have it all when you choose Lysart steel roofing and walling. Insist on the best. Insist on Lysart. Field is made. Made for the contemporary. Made for imagination. Made for style. Silver's made. Made for inspiration. Why do you think we feel an emotional connection to bring? When we start looking at the design, what colour, what texture, we sort of look at the red earth of the heart of Australia. How do you think the people will view the building in 50 years' time? We talk about a lot of it is about designing for timeless beauty. There's also another ways of look at design for the moment. And now to the work of the Institute's members overseas. The next category is the Australian Award for International Architecture. Each of the award-winning projects were considered by the national jury in this category. Let's take a look. Aman Kyoto by Kerry Hill Architects. Museum Lab by Koning Eisenberg Architecture. Terrace House near Demachianagi by Atelier Luke. And The Arroyo Affordable Housing by Koning Eisenberg Architecture. 
and the jury have awarded the highest honour in this category, the Jörn Utzen Award for International Architecture. And it goes to the Arroyo Affordable Housing by Koning Eisenberg Architecture. Koning Eisenberg has designed an exceptional project that balances efficiency with delight, supports its community, optimises environmental performance and offers amenity to its urban context. Two five-storey parallel blocks with open walkways and expressed corridors frame a courtyard that is conceived as a big backyard. Strong colour is used to articulate structure, suffetes and sunshades. The Arroyo affirms that within the limits of typology and budget, thoughtful design can make beautiful, amenable places where residents can live and thrive with dignity. Congratulations, Koning Eisenberg Architecture. And rather than waking Hank and Julie up with a Skype call at this time of morning in LA, it's the very small hours of the morning, they've sent through this brief acceptance message. Over to Hank. G'day. It's 2 a.m. in Los Angeles, and I'm thrilled that the Arroyo Affordable Housing Project was selected for this prestigious award. It means a lot to us. It'll mean a lot to our client who struggled to produce uh, quality, affordable housing in the Los Angeles area. So thank you very much to the international chapter jury who got us here to the table and uh, to the national jury who selected us for this award. Hope to see you soon. The next category is Heritage. 12 projects won awards across the states and territories, and from these, the jury shortlisted these five. Boson's Cottage by Taylor and Hines Architects. Hollow Tree House by Core Collective Architects. Broadmeadows Town Hall by Kirsten Thompson Architects. Regent Theatre, Melbourne, by Lovell Chen. And State Library, Victoria, Redevelopment, by Architectus and Schmidt Hammerlassen Architects. And the jury has given a national award for heritage to Regent Theatre, Melbourne, by Lovell Chen. Lovell Chen's work on the fourth incarnation of the Regent Theatre has prepared this important landmark for a new generation of performers and theatre goers. A complex array of technical requirements on both sides of the stage is seamlessly accommodated without compromising the building's aesthetic values. The work is an exemplar of fine conservation and the painstaking research required to deliver it. The architect's conceptual skill and thoroughness in identifying, sourcing and coordinating the appropriate resources to realise such a project should not be underestimated. Congratulations, Lovell Chen. And the jury have awarded the highest honour in this category, the Lachlan Macquarie Award for Heritage, jointly to two projects. So I have two envelopes right here. The first recipient of the Lachlan Macquarie Award for Heritage is Bozen's Cottage by Taylor and Hines Architects. The restoration of the convict-built Bozen's Cottage takes an inspired and sensitive approach in making contemporary additions to such a modest structure. A new timber layer lines the interior of the four-room cottage, a reminder of the original 180-year-old structure. The original stonework has been restored, except where the contemporary and exquisitely scaled window bay gives district views and light to the interior. This project promotes a view of historic workmanship while simultaneously projecting an engaging future. Congratulations, Taylor and Hines Architects. And I am joined now by Matt Hines and Poppy Taylor, and it looks like you have a few more people with you. Can you do some introductions, please? <laughs> this is uh, Doug and Alison, the owners of Bosons, so they were our clients. Oh, congratulations. And Charlie. Ah, and <laughs> 
<laughs> Excellent. Well, congratulations. And um, I always wish we could broadcast the reactions when you see the announcements because that was quite a response. Um, I might ask the clients if that is all right. How does it feel to receive the named award in the heritage category? Really, really wonderful. We feel really honoured and privileged. And uh, it was just wonderful having um, Matt and Poppy to do the work for us. It was great. Oh, wonderful. And uh, Matt and Poppy, um, is there anything that you'd like to say about working on this exceptional project? Um, well, we also feel a little bit speechless and hugely privileged. Um, I, 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 I want to thank um, Derek and Russell at, um, who built this place with us or did the work to um, bring it back into the 21st century. And they were incredible. So I hope they're watching, but um, we're just delighted, totally delighted. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, Poppy, anything that you'd like to add? Um, oh, just thanking Doug and Alison. And it's been an, an absolute honour of a project and a labour of love for everyone involved. And yeah, we're absolutely thrilled. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, what are your plans for celebrating for the rest of the night in Tassie there? Huge night. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I will let you all get back to it, but congratulations to you all once again, and I hope you have a great night. Thank you, Thank you, very, Thank you, very, you, so Thank you very much. Thank you. Three, two, one. Hi. 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 Hey, we're we are architects. Hi. We are Rossi Architects. We're Rock Henry Architects. Hi, we're Balcorbet. We, we are Cape Point Architecture. We're Level Chen. I'm Socrates. I'm Philip Architects. Hey, we're the Mill. Hi. We're City Design. We're Regional Design Service. Hi, we are Charles Darwin University Design Students. We're Studio. Hi, from ARM. Hi. Hi. We're Hassel. And you're watching the ACP Architecture. Architecture. Tasmanian Architecture. Queensland Architecture. Victorian Architecture. Western Australia Architecture. Western Australia Architecture. Western Australia Architecture. Australian Architecture. Victorian Architecture. West Australian Architecture. International Architecture. NT Architecture. Miete Architecture. Architecture. Welcome to the 2020 National Architecture Awards. Yeah! And bear with us while we place a call through to the joint recipients of this award. I hope you're standing by so we can hear about this project because the jury have also awarded the Lachlan Macquarie Award for Heritage too. Hollow Tree House by Core Collective Architects. A significant commitment to Tasmania's heritage has been made with the restoration of Hollow Tree House and its stables. The informed and artful peeling back of building layers reveals the original fabric, constructed at various times in the house's history. While the architects have been respectful of the house's past, their inventive and fine insertions also propose an optimistic future. Core Collective Architects' contemporary aesthetic is nuanced and captivating against the original austerity of the colonial Georgian homestead, resulting in an enchanting contemporary house. Congratulations, Core Collective Architects. And Ryan Strating from Core Collective Architects joins me now from Tassie as well. Ryan, thank you so much for picking up the call so quickly and congratulations. Thanks, Ruth. That's great. Thanks for the call. We, it's, it's wonderful to get this award and to share it with Matt and Poppy from Taylor and Hines. I mean, what a great way to, to win an award for two small Tassie practices. I mean, we've all both all come up together here and um, yeah, it's wonderful. And that last photo there was so good to see the team. I mean, this project was such a great teamwork. I mean, that's what makes these projects wonderful. And that, that last photo there um, really captures that with the builder and the clients and the architectural team. It's fantastic. Wonderful. And um, are the clients watching tonight, Ryan, do you know? Yeah, I think they might be. They're, they're in Sydney at the moment. They live at, in, in the house full time, but they've been travelling to visit some family. And uh, yeah, so hi to Harriet and Richard. I mean, they, these were, Harriet and Richard are incredible clients and we, we built such a great collaborative team through the whole project with, with them being involved in all the decision making and the peeling back and then the relayering with, with, with this new work and done by a fantastic building team, Paradigm and 
today, Davenport Paradigm and the Heritage Consultants and Heritage Engineers, just a wonderful tight team that, that worked together to bring ideas and it was a, a really, truly collaborative process. Oh look, that's absolutely wonderful to hear. And you mentioned that you're a quite small practice in Tassie. Um, what does it mean to receive the named award at a national level in the heritage category? I don't know yet. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't received a named award um, outside the state. And uh, yeah, it's the highest level of the Institute's awards and, and we're completely amazed. I mean, Emily's here with me now. We've, we've got a, there she is. <laughs> Get into the shot, people. Come on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we've had we've had some builders in tonight, and uh, yeah, he's out. Hi. <laughs> I was trying to stay out of the way, but uh, hi everyone. <laughs> Hello. We had to get you in this shot. <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Sorry, I interrupted you there. I was just going to say you saw him there in the photos on the um, from site. I mean, the, that's that's how these projects work best when when we're there with the builders and with the clients and making decisions. And you have to be a little bit uh, creative as the process unfolds with these old buildings. It's, 200 year old building and yeah we're hoping it's going to be another 200 years with this new um, rigorous approach to restoration for the modern era. Fantastic well a very well deserved win great to see two Tassie practices taking out the award a big night for Tasmania I will leave you guys to enjoy the rest of your evening but congratulations once again. Thank you. Thanks Vic. <laughs> see ya. We're the Tasmanian and international chapter team and you're watching the National Architecture Awards. And now to Small Project Architecture, where eight projects came through for consideration by the National Jury, and four were shortlisted. Let's take a look at the projects in the running. For Our Country by Edition Office and Daniel Boyd. Marston Park Amenities by Croffy. In Absence by Edition Office and Yoni Scars. And Protagonist by Cumulus Studio. In the category of Small Project Architecture, the jury have awarded two national commendations. The first goes to Marsden Park Amenities by Croffy. Congratulations to John Choi and the team. A national commendation for Small Project Architecture is also awarded to Protagonist by Cumulus Studio. Congratulations, Cumulus. The jury have given a national award for Small Project Architecture too. In Absence by Edition Office and Yoni Skars. Using architecture and art to contribute to an important national conversation, Edition Office and Yoni Skars have combined collaboration, abstraction, geometry, choreography and a dense and finely detailed material quality with exceptional clarity of thought and resolution. Developed through an Indigenous-led consultation process, the project arrives at a design that speaks multiple truths, celebrates the architecture, agriculture and industry of Indigenous Australians and invites an awareness of cultural erasure. Congratulations, Edition Office and Yoni Skars. And the highest honour in this category, the Nicholas Merkett Award for Small Project Architecture goes to for Our Country by Edition Office and Daniel Boyd. The task of adequately acknowledging Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander diggers within the shadows of the Australian War Memorial brought with it much responsibility. For Our Country is a simple concept, expertly executed with precision and clarity, while concealing a degree of complexity in thinking. This important work is of particular significance in light of the recent Black Lives Matter movement. It is as evocative and powerful as it is subtly provocative in its commitment to truth-telling within an intimate yet accessible moment of introspection. Congratulations, Edition Office and Daniel Boyd. And I'm joined now by Kim and Aaron from Edition Office. Well, congratulations to you. Two awards, the award and the named award in this category. An outstanding achievement. 
Okay. It's a profound honor and, and such a, a strange moment to be here without Dan um, to accept this award together. He, he was in Sydney watching along, but um, uh, yeah, I just want to send the most amazing thank you to such a beautiful human. It's such a, a pleasure to collaborate with him on this, this project. Well, a big shout out, and uh, I hope, Daniel, you're in, enjoying the moment from Sydney um, on YouTube. Um, Kim, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to work on this incredibly significant project? It was, uh, it's, um, it's such a privilege and an honour um, to work on this project um, on behalf um, you know, of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community um, and for those, um, uh, in, in so many levels, in terms of the um, individual families and going through their own mourning processes for, uh, for broader communities. Um, the, the entire community in terms of um, um, formal military service, but also the entire Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community in terms of um, the dispossession and the, the frontier wars. Um, there are so many myriad levels that this project is speaking to and trying to facilitate a pathway for those um, very small scale introspective mourning processes as well as those large kind of um, nation story building morning processes. It was you know, a, 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 a kind of a career, um, <laughs> an in incredibly large moment within an entire career to um, have that opportunity to carry that forward for them. Well, the jury was certainly incredibly impressed by this project um, and also your other project, which involved Yoni. And I, I think Yoni's there with you tonight. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> we may as well. <laughs> Hello, congratulations. Um, we may as well cover congratulations on both these outstanding projects while we're here. Um, is there anyone that you'd particularly like to acknowledge tonight, Kim or, or Aaron? Well, um, we should definitely thank uh, everyone involved in the project, the, the team at War Memorial, um, obviously Daniel Boyd, um, the elders and the, um, the community that we uh, engaged with throughout the process. Uh, yeah, it was, it was one of those challenging projects um, that was incredibly small, but um, incredibly kind of intense in terms of its um, deliverable time frame and so forth. So, you know, everybody involved in the project from a delivery point of view were really fantastic to work with. So, yeah, it was um, a great honor, as, as Kim's pointed out, and incredibly excited to be involved in such a, such a project. Yeah, Aaron, the clients of the Australian War Memorial were so uh, supportive. Um, in the, the the concept that we proposed um, was supported wholeheartedly by the Nunavut Council of Elders, the, the military um, elders, and the, um, the client themselves. That they actually supported this increasing the scale from the the initial um, tender bid because they were, you know uh, I guess our advice was that it actually it met the brief in terms of the scale, but it actually needed to be you know, um, a larger size, it needed to be what it is, and they supported us wholeheartedly to actually um, lift it up um, above the sculpture commission that it was intended to be. Um, so it was a, you know, a pleasure to have that, uh, I don't know, that, that client support to deliver an incredibly significant project. Oh, well, congratulations once again on um, an absolutely fantastic project. And uh, I do hope that you enjoy the rest of your evening there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the WA Chapter. You're watching the 2020 National Architecture Awards. All the very best to all of the WA entrants. Woo! <laughs>And now to the Colour Bond Award for Steel Architecture, supported by the Institute's principal partner, Blue Scope. For me, the pull of the Australian landscape is that it's got this beaten, weathered harshness, which is contrasted by these beautiful colours and soft matte surfaces. I love how matte surface holds light, how it diffuses the light. It's absolute joy to photograph. It's like colour bond steel matte. It's strong, enduring, yet subtle in its beauty. And Tom Tyndall from Blue Scope has sent through this message. Thanks, Viv. Hi, everyone. Once again, on behalf of Blue Scope, it's a pleasure to be here with you for the 2020 AAA National Architecture Awards. And what a year it has been, a year like no other. We've gone from some of the worst bushfires in recent history straight into a global pandemic. 
The toll has been immense in so many ways, and unlike most events, COVID-19 has impacted everyone in some way. Now, I'm not going to focus on negative messages. There are plenty of others around doing that. Rather, I'd like to focus on some of the positive things that have resonated with me throughout the year. We've seen kids from all over the country hopping off their devices to draw rainbows on their footpath, small libraries opening up outside people's houses, and teddy bears in front yards giving families a more interesting walk. And not to mention the amazing work of our healthcare workers throughout this time. I'm sure you've all heard stories of people going above and beyond to help support their communities. And for me, it's actually the idea of community that has bonded us together throughout this time of adversity. And so it will be as a community that we help move our country forward in the years to come. So what does that mean for us? To me, it means working towards true collaboration to create beautiful places. It also means considering the impacts of your design choices, both environmentally, economically, and socially. Bluescope's roots in Australia extend back over 100 years. We've been through the Spanish flu, polio, the Asian flu, and now coronavirus. We are a resilient organisation and a proud Australian manufacturer. We've been there with you throughout this year and we will be for many years to come. So with that being said, tonight's all about celebrating great Australian architecture. So with that in mind, I'd like to congratulate all of the entrants for all of the categories. So for now, let's look at the nominees for the 2020 National Colour Bond Award for Steel Architecture. Elm Grove House by Ben Walker Architects. Bankwest Stadium by Populous. DMS Multipurpose Hall by Rossi Architects. Peekaboo House by Alcorn Middleton. Pembroke Middle School Redevelopment by Grieve Gillette Anderson. Kingborough Community Hub by March Studio. Carlton Learning Precinct, Cola by Law Architects. Monash University Chancellery by ARM Architecture. And Wickham Community Hub by Gresley Abbas. Well, a great field of entrance from every state and territory. And thanks, Tom and Blue Scope, for your long-standing support of the Institute and also this award. The jury have awarded a commendation in this category to Bankwest Stadium by Populous. Congratulations, Al Baxter and the team at Populous. And the 2020 Colour Bond Award for Steel Architecture goes to Carlton Learning Precinct Cola by Law Architects. Law Architects made a significant move to unlock the potential of this humble yet transformative project by choosing to create an open-air, multi-purpose court rather than a fully enclosed gymnasium. The deceptively simple structure of steel columns supporting open-web steel trusses and an Aramax roof slung below delivers a clean, uninterrupted ceiling to this outdoor room. This project delivers much more than the brief and is a terrific demonstration of a considered architectural response, realised through a clear and elegant solution. Congratulations, Law Architects. And I'm joined now by Sandy Law and the team at Law Architects. Congratulations. Very nice to see you all gathered in the same room. I think the Victorian Awards, it was all a Zoom thing again. So great that you're all celebrating yes. together. Um, how does it feel? Well, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Viv. And first off, it's the first time we've actually all seen each other. So it's even more yeah. uh, poignant. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Special. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, you received a commendation for educational architecture for this project as well. And I know when we spoke a few months ago, you talked about the transformative effect that you hope that this project is going to have in the community. Can you tell us a little bit about it? You wanna, do you want to speak? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> there you go. I think, I think the project is just um, is many and varied, has lots of layers. It is a 24-hour you know, sort of opportunity to interact, to connect, and there's, you know, a whole lot of social equality, you know, sort of capital that can be born out of this amazing structure. I think it's amazing. Simple structure, super simple, uh, and, yeah, 
really demonstrates how challenging the brief and challenging the norm can get something extraordinary out of a very humble budget. Excellent. And the use of steel is obviously something that the, the jury has been particularly impressed by here and the craftsmanship that has been used. Is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge in terms of the way it's been constructed? Well, obviously the builder, uh, building <laughs> engineering. <laughs> But also the engineers, uh, originally from Calibre, but a special thanks to Gary White and Terry Leach for um, yeah, their amazing contribution. And also to Bard Gregory, who um, really brought in the element of the Aramax roofing, which is um, has such a big impact from the underside, which is so rare to experience from roof sheeting. Mm. Excellent. And is there... Oh, sorry, you go yeah. ahead. <laughs> no, that's all right. I was just going to say, particularly in that really tight urban context that it's in too, so... Yeah. Excellent. Well, look, congratulations once again to the team. I hope you guys have a great night and uh, yes, enjoy. <laughs> we will. We will. Moving on to interior architecture, where the jury considered 19 projects in total, the second largest field of entrance among the awards categories this year. They shortlisted these five. Breezeway House by David Boyle Architect. Grand Peary House by Virginia Carriage Architect. Lawler Residence by Andrew Donaldson, Architecture and Design. Phoenix Central Park by Durback Block Jaggers and John Wardle Architects. And Napier Street for Milieu by Friedman White. The jury have awarded a National Commendation for Interior Architecture 2. Napier Street for Milieu by Friedman White. Congratulations, Alana Friedman and Michael White and the team. A national award for interior architecture goes to Grant Peary House by Virginia Carriage Architect. In the spirit of architectural design as a continuum, Virginia Carriage has recalibrated Graham Yarn's Robin Boyd Award winning project to accommodate a new chapter in the client's life the wood of the founding timber warehouse and the concrete of the original house are exquisitely partnered with a new suite of rolled steel details that remain true to the honesty of material throughout. The result is a container that artfully screens the harshness of the inner city site while welcoming in the sun, breeze and bird song. Congratulations, Virginia Carriage Architect. and the highest honour in this category. The Emil Soderston Award for Interior Architecture goes to Phoenix Central Park by Durback Block Jaggers and John Wardle Architects. An inspired partnership is evident in the architecture of Phoenix Central Park, one based on friendship and driven by mutual critique in place of a prescriptive brief. Beyond the facade is a wondrous interior that is defined by a controlled and unexpected shifting of sunlight. Each space stuns, but the connections between them are equally inspiring. Described by the jury as a masterwork, the overall composition is seamlessly melded to the point where it's difficult to decipher where one design hand ends and the other begins. Congratulations, Durback Block Jaggers and John Wardle Architects. And I'm joined once again by the team at John Wardle Architects, led, of course, by the 2020 gold medalist, John Wardle. Congratulations once again. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, I'll first explain a little bit about the job and then some thanks. First off, it was a remarkable pleasure working with uh, the Jaggers. We commenced the project as dear friends and uh, remained throughout uh, this bond of friendship that drew a project together through deep discussion, lots of humour that uh, Camilla mentioned. It was something that really fuelled 
uh, virtually every meeting, every presentation that we did, it was a, it was a remarkable aspect of our lengthy conversations that really caused this project to happen. So that was a it's great pleasure, our practice that coming together with this remarkable Sydney practice. Um, to Judith, who, as, as you'll notice, it, it, not only this project, but the others that she has commissioned have, have had this level of success with, with recognition from our institute. And at a time when our, we spend so much of our energy competing for work, to have a remarkable client steadfastly doing their own research, getting the advice of others, and, and basically bringing up some architects and asking them to come together for this commission is a, is a rare privilege. So we had to do our best work. We had to assemble and uh, come together over such a long period of time, it was about six years from start to finish, uh, to really honour this great commission that Judith gave us. Uh, it was great. Our, Many people thank uh, our team that worked together on it. Uh, uh, Stefan, uh, Diego, Alex, uh, Luca, and the others. Quite a, quite a large team that worked together on the project. We can't all be here tonight. A maximum of 10 in Melbourne at this moment. Our first night together, like so many Victorians. Um, great builders, uh, certainly those in Bellevue who commenced the project. FDC who then took over the reins uh, built beautifully and the range of remarkable people that came together to build this project is really a testament to the many hands that and bright minds that uh, produced the work that we asked of them. So just wonderful. Great. And the interiors, something nice about the, the interiors award, I think there's um, we, we often discuss it between the two practices. This is a real essay in collaboration. You can sort of see evidence of where we've come together, the discussions of the place, the parts that we discussed, what we've designed together, but then where we departed into our own inner realms and, and the performance space, which is very much DBJ, uh, and the, the gallery, which is, which is much more us. And um, it's just a great equation of, of, these, of these, this group of people coming together. Wonderful. Well, look, congratulations once again to the John Wardle team. It's been quite a night for you guys, and you obviously have a lot to celebrate. <laughs> well, I'll let you go. I'll let you go on that note. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening. And we will take one more quick break with these messages from the award sponsors, and we'll be back. Channel is a media platform to support the architecture and construction industry. It means that we can connect with a whole lot of people outside our office, all around the world, all day, anytime. You receive a premium screen which silently broadcasts your work, inspiring examples of great design and important industry news. All of this is at no cost to you. For us it's really about no more scrolling through endless content. It's literally front and centre for everyone here at K2LD. For more than 40 years, Plan Cover has been committed to assisting architects to identify and manage the varied and complex risks which they encounter in professional practice. From the placement of insurance and the provision of technical advice, through to our innovative risk management program, we are dedicated to supporting our architects. Plan Cover, owned by the Institute, protecting the profession.
And now to the category of sustainable architecture. The National Jury considered the 13 projects that won awards at the state and territory level, and they shortlisted these six projects. Marie Rie Teaching Centre, ANU, by BVN. Arcadia, by DKO Architecture, with Breathe Architecture and Oculus. Merrickville Library, by BVN. Monrepo Turtle Centre, by Kirk. Queensland University of Technology, Peter Coldrake Education Precinct by Wilson Architects and Henning Larson Architects, Architects in Association. And Pingerley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredell Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. The jury have awarded two national commendations in this category. The first goes to Monrepo Turtle Centre by Kirk. Congratulations to Richard Kirk and the team. A national commendation for sustainable architecture is also awarded to Pingerley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredell Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. And a big shout out to Adrian Iredell and congratulations to the entire team involved in that project. And the highest honour in this category, the David Oppenheim Award for Sustainable Architecture goes to Marrickville Library by BVN. Sustainability, in its most broad sense, is central to the design intent for Marrickville Library. By incorporating an old hospital building, the building embraces adaptive reuse and respects the site's heritage. The design uses an abundance of natural light and maintains comfortable conditions using a mixed mode ventilation system. Sustainable timbers and recycled bricks are used throughout and a significant reduction in energy use was achieved. The jury applauds this building which positively addresses environmental imperatives as well as community, education, heritage and cultural concerns in a most uplifting way. Congratulations, BVN. And I'm joined now by Bill Dowser and the team. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. Well, I'm glad we got you on the line. It was a little bit touch and go there, but nice to see you, Bill, and good to see you in Sydney. Last time we talked about this project, you were still stuck in New York, weren't you? Oh, uh, well, yes. Excellent. Well, so to the named award for sustainable architecture, um, I understand that sustainability was a core part of the community's brief when it came to this project. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you've responded to it here? Oh, absolutely. And I think that one thing with the community with such a diverse community in Marrickville and everything that they were wanting to achieve in the building it was fantastic to be able to sort of bring that into it and make it a living um almost a, a laboratory for for a showcase as, as building as teacher to be able to sort of showcase all of the sort of environmental initiatives within the, within the project excellent and um i'm sure there are many people who were involved in this project is there anyone in yeah. particular you'd like to acknowledge so it's interesting. I mean, this has represented a, a huge team effort over many, many years. I mean, we started this project in 2012, um, and and many, many people have worked on the project. But Sense of Arming were our um, environmental consultants. But the team's commitment to to the project and to the environmental response was really sort of paramount, and that included the clients uh, who we have here, um, which went through a whole sort of series of iterations. So I think the whole team has contributed to, to the outcome of the project. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys get back to your celebrations. Um, and I do hope that you guys enjoy the rest of the night. Thank okay. you. See you. Bye. Bye.
The next three categories are for residential architecture and we'll begin with the announcements for multiple housing, where the jury considered 14 projects. But first, to say a few words, it's my pleasure to introduce National Juror Jenny Officer to tell us a little bit about the jury's deliberations and introduce the five projects in the shortlist. Thanks Viv and good evening everyone. It's been a great privilege to be on the National Jury this year and it certainly gave new meaning to the notion of zooming around the country for a couple of weeks to look at some really extraordinary projects. Multiple residential housing is critically important for architecture nationally. The multi-residential projects we saw this year made us think about that pertinent and delicate balance between individual experience and collective experience, about amenity and density, about how we might live together. The projects also made us think about their bigger role of unlocking the living potential of our cities through contributions to street life, to non-residents, to neighbours and to the whole ecology of places. We found projects where canny and delightful architecture was formed, despite the challenges of site and budget, of rigid planning controls and the limits of the inherent repetitiveness within the type. We found some wonderful architecture that spanned and gave its full attention to both the domestic and the civic. And now, let's take a look at the shortlisted projects. Studio Apartments by Hill Thalas Architecture and Urban Projects. Verve Residences by CKDS Architecture with Hill Thalas Architecture and Urban Projects. Gillies Hall by Jackson Clements Burroughs Architects. Napier Street for Milieu by Friedman White. And Salisbury Townhouses by NTF Architecture. Thanks, Jenny, and a great range of projects. The jury have awarded three national commendations in this category. The first goes to Verve Residences by CKDS Architecture with Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects. Congratulations to Stuart Campbell, Philip Thallus and the teams. The second national commendation goes to Gillies Hall by Jackson Clements Burroughs Architects. Congratulations to JCB. And the final national commendation is awarded to Salisbury Townhouses by NTF Architecture. Congratulations, NTF. A national award for residential architecture, multiple housing goes to Napier Street for Milieu by Friedman White. Adjacent to their multi-award winning Whitlam Place, this project continues the architect's fine work in this challenging typology. The restrained material palette and subtle variants in brick detailing create a warmth to the building's exterior, while internal planning allows varied apartment types. The consistent detail, materiality, architectural language and the experiential quality create a wonderful dichotomy between housing multiple dwellings and the sense of the building as a singular whole. Congratulations, Friedman White. And the highest honour in this category, the Frederick Romberg Award for Residential Architecture Multiple Housing goes to Studio Apartments by Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects. Studio Apartments introduces unexpected amenity, dignity and quality to an affordable housing project. Every apartment has expansive, well-shaded glazing to the north and a sunny balcony. Every apartment is naturally cross-ventilated and overlooks the street. And the fanning disposition means that every apartment has its own distinct spatial character. The jury applauds this project, which approaches a tough typology with remarkable gentleness. Congratulations, Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects. And I'm joined now by Philip Thallus and very glad we caught wind you're at the Hassel party tonight. Congratulations. Well, 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 Hassel are actually at our party, so we're welcome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Studio shares with Peter McGregor, so um, lots of time. So we're having a very good night, thanks. Oh, well, call call any time. I'm very glad to hear it. Yes, our tech team has been, you know, having mild heart attacks trying to find you, but we've got you on the line, which is great. So, um, congratulations, and um, what would you like to say upon receiving this high honour in this category? 
Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Aaron and Jonathan and Adrian, who's on Zoom from Hong Kong, who were the project team on this project. I'd like to thank our fantastic clients, who are also the builders, um, Australex and Mahmoud and his four brothers, who are quite an unusual, fabulous client, who, who keep the building. Um, they're a family of concreters. Uh, this building has very good concrete. Uh, it's a labour of love from their, their point of view, and Michael, the foreman. Um, so there's, there's lots of people to, to thank um, who worked on the project. Excellent. Now, the jury were particularly impressed by the amenity in this building. Can you describe it for us? Um, well, they're very small apartments. It's, this building is realised under um, a planning regime called Affordable Housing SEP, Boarding House Provision, which has no qualitative dimensions at all. Its only dimension is small quantities. And so we wanted to give everybody housing with dignity. We wanted to give them qualities. We wanted to give them within the very limited space constraints because there's actually a maximum size. We wanted to give them higher ceilings. Um, they all face north. They're all cross-ventilated. Um, they have bathrooms with windows. Uh, they have the sliding screens. The kitchens overlook the street. We wanted to give them a home. People a home. And I think affordable housing is one of the great challenges in Australian cities today. We do it so badly, we're, we really need models. This is a model, it's realised by the private sector in a hostile planning environment. Um, there's a lot to learn from this project. Excellent, well, as the jury said, it is certainly a very challenging typology and one that you have delivered an exceptional result for. Um, have you had much of a response from the clients to this project? Oh, well, they're, they're very happy with it. I was speaking to the client yesterday that the common room which opens to the roof terrace is booked by the residents. There's 36 rooms and so they get uh, this fantastic roof terrace with views of the city, a big common room and that's, that's a hugely popular thing for them. The step gardens also and the roof terrace I think the, the residents are enjoying very much as well. So it's really giving some amenity. That's actually not us, that's the street. Uh, <laughs> But we do have our own, we can cheer if you want. Well, so it's thank you to the jury too. Uh, yes, well look, fantastic to hear such a brilliant team spirit um, from your, your fellow peers there. Um, and look, congratulations to you and your team once again on an absolutely exceptional work of multi-residential architecture. I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
of the spectacular views to the garden and harbour. Chen Chao Little has made architecture that is exquisite, confident and highly compelling. Congratulations, Chen Chao Little. And Tony Chen Chao and Stephanie Little and the team join us now. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is really exciting and such an honour. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, uh, tell us a little bit about this project. Are the clients with you this evening by any chance? Uh, they're not. Um, I, I think they're um, watching in, but um, they're not with us, unfortunately. But they were a fantastic client, so um, yeah, we're so lucky um, to work with them. Um, they were really supportive and encouraging all the way through, um, and they really pushed us yeah, to, to do our best. So it's, it's great. Wonderful. And how does it feel to win the named award in the alterations and additions category at the national level? Um, it, it's amazing. Um, yeah, real shock. So, um, yeah, it's fantastic. It was a really complex and um, difficult project. There was, as um, you mentioned earlier, there's lots of levels. There's a lot going on. There's five different um, existing structures on the site that we had to work around. So it was, um, yeah, quite a complex and um, sort of laborious job. But um, we're, yeah, so um, happy with the outcome. Excellent. And Tony, anything you'd like to add to that? Any members of your team sitting behind you that you might like to acknowledge? <laughs> yes, it's very important to thank a few people. Um, we met Gerald. Uh, Gerald was the project architect uh, on the job and he did an amazing job coordinating the, uh, I guess as Stephanie said, the complexities of the site and the architectural details. And he worked partially on the project. Good way there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and also, I think it's important to thank uh, some of the um, consultants. I think it was uh, Partridge Partners. Uh, there are engineers and hydraulic engineers, uh, three sixty degree landscape architect, um, and uh, Viva Construction. Um, they were the builders. Excellent. You. Oh, great. And uh, is there a big celebration happening there tonight? Yes. 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 <laughs> it's, it's about to get bigger. <laughs> Well, excellent. On that note, I will leave you guys to it. I do hope you enjoy the rest of your night, and congratulations once again. Thank you. We are McBride Charles Ryan, and welcome to the 2020 National Architecture Awards. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>Breezeway House by David Boyle Architect. Congratulations, David. And the jury have awarded a national award for residential architecture, houses new to Glebe House by Chen Chao Little. Behind its enigmatic facade, this modestly sized but generously proportioned four bedroom house on a tight inner Sydney site provides an exemplary balance of imagination and restraint. The house expands the potential of a small building by juxtaposing unexpected elements, the monumentally scaled windows and the modest spaces inside, the lush joinery curves of the internal walls and the simple white timber boarding of its envelope, the simple prism of its external volume and the complex sculpture of its interior. In the client's own words, it is inviting and luxurious and yet simple and humble. Congratulations, Chen Chao Little. and the jury have awarded the highest honour in this category, the prestigious Robin Boyd Award for Residential Architecture Houses New, jointly to two projects. The first recipient of the Robin Boyd Award is Basin Beach House by Peter Stutchbury Architecture. A 
site-responsive design was key to this private dwelling, perched among the sandy dunes of Sydney's northern beaches. As if hewn from a single piece of timber, a carefully calibrated sequence of spaces moves the visitor toward the ocean outlook. Meticulous detailing belies this project's simple clarity. Modulated hatches capture breezes when needed, while the design employs solar passive principles throughout. Basin Beach House presents a practice at the top of its game, while maintaining a gentle decorum befitting this ecologically sensitive context. Congratulations, Peter Stutchbury Architecture. And I'm delighted to be joined by the very enthusiastic team at Peter Stutchbury Architecture, including gold medalist Peter Stutchbury. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and Belinda Koopman and the client, Jeff Freeman. Ah, oh, wonderful, fantastic. And are yeah, you actually- The house, actually. <laughs> the house space and house. I was going to say, there was something about that background that looked very familiar. Um, well, perhaps if I may, could I ask the client, what is it like to live in a Robin Boyd award-winning home? It is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And it's more special because I <clears throat> actually worked in a Robin Boyd building in Melbourne many years ago. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> that puts you on the cake. But uh, the house itself is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And it's not often I get to ask the client, what was it like to work with the architect on this project? Uh, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's a good segue over to Peter and the team. Peter, what would you like us to know about what... Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Back to the client. Oh, look, I'd just like to make a few thank yous. Obviously, to the jury, we're just unbelievably excited and grateful to be given this award. It really is very, very special. Of course, Jeff has just been a remarkable client. Um, he's given us an enormous amount of freedom and respect, and we really give great credit to Jeff, but of course, the builder, uh, Capital Constructions, Michael Shortus, Will, um, and Brad, the foreman, he was just extraordinary, amazing engineer to get this roof to work. Um, and of course, Peter and the team and everyone else here, it's just, we are very, very lucky people to be able to do these projects. Wonderful. And of course, the Robin Boyd Award is a highly sought after honour within Australian architecture. Can I ask what it means to the practice to receive this honour this evening? Uh, it's a, um, well, it's an honour as it is for, I think, all the recipient, recipients this evening. And they've been some wonderful projects. And I think of um, uh, Matt and Polly's project down at Tasmania and, and John and uh, Neil and Camilla and David's project and, in the city there. and, and of course, <laughs> wonderful Rick's yeah. project just up the road. Um, and they all have something in common, I, I think, which is a sort of humility to them, even though they're quite proud and dignified, they have a certain humility to them, those projects. And um, we had a great meeting today actually with state government and we're talking about the word humility and dignity and, and um, where we move on from here, which is what Kerry was talking about in terms of enduring architecture. Mm. Thank you, Kerry, for that. And, and where do we move on from here? This, this house is 171 square metres, and, it, and yet it has accommodation for three, fam or three, three families or couples or whatever. It has enough bathrooms to suffice. It's on our great coastline of Australia, and it has a certain informality yet formality, which I think is, is Australian by nature. So we're delighted to receive an award like this. Yeah, thank you. Oh, well, look, congratulations once again to you all. Thank you so much for taking the cross within the project itself. It's wonderful to see, and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, take 27. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi, I'm Joel. This is Chloe. We're our Colin Middleton. We're Carter Wilson. Huntingford Architecture. We're Nike Richards. We're Borelli. X-Ray Architects. Hi, from Gatineau. We're the Kawhi Architects. We're Wilson Architects. Hi, I'm John Taylor. We're Matt Smart. We're Matt Studio. You're watching the awards. You're watching the Architectural Awards. Where? From Gatineau Country in Sydney. 
from Brisbane. We're standing outside our sunny Glen Osmond studio. Speak to you from New York City. And you're watching the National Art Treasure Awards. And can the shortlisted practices be on standby for the call as we're going to try to cross to you in just a moment? The Robin Boyd Award for Residential Architecture Houses New is also awarded to... East Street by Kirsten Thompson Architects. The jury applauds this modest, single-storey dwelling, which is both evocative and finely crafted. Responding to its sloping site, the design builds on a legacy of modernist traditions, yet with a twist. The antithesis of the big is better credo, the efficient footprint, contains everything and then some. The design holds refined details and moments of surprise with not a millimetre of space wasted. The characteristics embedded throughout demonstrate a generosity of spirit that remains ever mindful of the belief in just enough and no more than necessary. Congratulations, Kirsten Thompson Architects. And I'm delighted to be joined now by Kirsten Thompson and the team. Congratulations. Thank you. We're um, absolutely delighted. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's unusual for the Robin Boyd Award to be awarded to two projects. So um, how does it feel? Is it something of a surprise? Uh, it seems like small is a bit of a theme that's linking the two. So um, I think that's a positive. And we we hope that a project like this is a and and the previous one perhaps as what's possible for you know suburban or urban or rural sites. So that's um that's 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 fantastic. Yes. Now, Kirsten, we heard a little bit of the jury's comments, obviously in summarised form in the citation just then. But can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to work on this project and perhaps what the client was hoping to achieve here? Uh, Vic and Jane, our clients, were just and fantastic and thank you to, um, to them. Uh, you never get a good project without a good client. Um, they were after something rural, rural sensibility but modest and compact and flexible for whether it's two of them or six or eight of them, it's a house that adapts accordingly for hot days, for cold days that's how houses have to work. So, um, and lots of really good conversations that went into this house, which have been ongoing after as well. You know, talking a lot about now that you're in it, what's it like to be in it? What can we learn from that? What can you learn from that? I think those conversations are really important with houses about how we live, yeah. And this is the marvelous Lynn, Lynn Chu. I want to just say, Congratulations to Lin Chu and William is Will, Will Will Samuels, who's here in New Zealand, actually. This is one of the great benefits of COVID. Um, as you can see from our fellow, our friends north, we're still pretty locked down here. We're carrying the can for Australia with <laughs> minimising COVID. But um, anyway, here we all are. So, yeah. Okay. Well, it's wonderful um, that the team has been able to join you, even if in virtual form, um, as they did a few months ago when we spoke about another of your award-winning projects. Um, is there anyone else on the team that you'd like to acknowledge, Kirsten? Look, um, I think Order. I mentioned Will and, and Lynn, but I also just want to say thank you, a shout out to our fantastic builder and immaculate construction, um, Scott James Builders, him, Felicity and Tyson on site, amazing team, the most beautiful craftsmanship there. It is built to last a very long time, that house, and as all buildings should be too. So, to longevity. Thank you. Hear, I'm hear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Oh, well, look, congratulations on uh, receiving the Robin Boyd Award once again to you and the team and also obviously to your client for commissioning such excellent work and making it possible. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.
Well, before we move on to the final category of the night, public architecture, there is one more award to announce that covers both the alterations and additions and new houses categories, the People's Choice Award. Supported by the Institute's major partner, Dulux, the People's Choice Award attracted 2,199 votes this year, which were cast for the 13 eligible projects. Thanks to everyone who took part this year. Now, three of the voters will receive a $500 Bunnings gift voucher, thanks to Dulux. The winners will be drawn in the next week, so if you voted, keep an eye out to see if you've won. And now, without any further ado, the winner of the 2020 People's Choice Award is Outside the Box by Tropo Architects. Congratulations once again to Tane and the team. And now to the final announcements of the night public architecture. A field of 14 entrants from across the country were considered in this category by the National Jury. And I'd like to hand back to the National Jury Chair, Professor Helen Lockhead, for some comments about the jury's deliberations in this category and to introduce the eight shortlisted projects. Thanks, Viv. Hello again, everyone. Great public buildings have an enduring value to the communities they serve. This year, the public buildings category revealed an evolving vision for contemporary public buildings that are distinctive, fresh, and decidedly welcoming to all. The richness of these projects was in the main amplified by considered reimagining of existing buildings, precincts, and typologies. Careful reconfiguration, reinterpretation, and renewal, together with judicious new interventions and innovative programming, have given outmoded facilities a new lease of life revitalizing both the buildings and their surroundings. Great architecture also requires great clients, and these buildings are without exception the outcome of these close collaborations between engaged, committed clients and architects who have gone the extra distance to create places that have delivered much more than the brief, expanding their reach and relevance now and into the future for generations to come. And now, let's take a look at the shortlisted projects. Anzac Memorial Centenary Extension by Johnson Pilton Walker with the Government Architect New South Wales. Marrickville Library by BVN. Monrepo Turtle Centre by Kirk. Kingborough Community Hub by March Studio. Parks Victoria Albert Park Office and Depot by Harrison and White with Archia. Penguin Parade Visitor Centre by Terroir. State Library Victoria Redevelopment by Architectus and Schmidt Hammerlassen Architects. And Pingerley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. Thanks, Helen. The jury have awarded two national commendations in this category. The first goes to State Library Victoria Redevelopment by Architectus and Schmidt Hammerlassen Architects. Congratulations to Ruth Wilson and the teams. And a national commendation for public architecture is also awarded to Parks Victoria Albert Park Office and Depot by Harrison and White with Archia. Congratulations, Harrison and White and Archia. And the jury have awarded the highest honour in this category, the prestigious Sir Zelman Cowan Award for Public Architecture jointly to two projects. The first is awarded to Marrickville Library by BVN. Marrickville Library has breathed new life into a disused building, catalyzing the transformation of an old hospital campus into a new civic hub. The heritage listed building has been carefully refurbished internally and externally, with a new extension defined by a generous colonnade and a playful sawtooth roof that references both the existing building and the typologies of Marrickville Road. Marrickville Library represents an evolving vision for new public buildings by creating a genuinely welcoming environment that places community life at its heart. Congratulations, BVN. 
and we were lucky enough to be able to visit the library just the other day and catch up with Caroline McLeod, Group Manager of Library and History Services at Marrickville Library, who, not knowing this project would receive an award, had this to say. When people walk into the building, the first thing they do is they look up and it's this look of wonder and so it's immensely satisfying because I sit on the stairs and I watch people and they walk in and they're like, my goodness, where are we? Look, what is this place? It's so beautiful. It opened last August to a crazy opening and thank goodness it was a rainy day because we had 6,000 people come on the first day and the whole of the outside and staircase was full of people and they just streamed in and we just had so many people and no one's left since then, it's been great. For our community, we've got people that are, they might work in social services or creative industries, or they might not work, or they go to a school that doesn't have a $60 million library. And so what this building does is that it gives everyone the opportunity to understand what great design does. Everyone deserves to sit in a beautiful chair. Everyone deserves to have a public building that is a place where you can come and not be expected to spend any money. It's become a true public space, so people are in love with it. I was thinking, like, how can you be in love with a building? <laughs> and, and people really are. And Bill Dowser and the team at BVN join me once again. Congratulations to the team. Thanks, Viv. I mean, that's amazing. And I think Caroline summed everything up in, in that little piece, um, <laughs> just how important it is to be able to do a building for the community and a building that the community can actually love, which is terrific. Like, the process of the whole project and, and the team's effort has just been amazing over well, a long period of time. Well, I do have to say it was very difficult to edit that piece with Caroline because she had so many great things to say about this project, <laughs> <laughs> including, and I think it's particularly noteworthy, the amount of community consultation that was involved and the way that BVN engaged with the community throughout the design process. Can you give us a bit of a flavour of that from your point of view, Bill? Um, well, look, that's where it really started. So we actually started with the whole community consultation process to actually understand the Marrickville community, which the diversity of the Marrickville community, one of the most diverse communities in Sydney. And then also, you know, what does the community actually want out of that sort of building? And I think that's been, that was the process that shaped how meaningful the end product ended up being um, within that environment. And I think that the point about a great public space for people is a particularly important one, you know, despite what we've been going through with COVID. Can you comment on, I guess, the importance of great design for communities like Marrickville and the Inner West in creating really good public places? Well, I think that, I think that Caroline actually summed that up in terms of everybody deserves to have a great space to be in. Uh, I think that Peter also mentioned earlier about humility and I think that was really interesting um, in terms of what that, that means in terms of a building that people are actually comfortable being in as well. So I think there's a, there's a sort of, you know, it, it, this was not a building designed for architects. This was actually a building designed for the community um, and, and a real team effort in terms of actually getting there too over a long period of time. Well, congratulations once again to the BVN team, to your client, of course, and I think also the people of the Inner West and Marrickville. This is a truly exceptional yeah. project. And thank you to the jury. We really, I mean, we're, we're, it's amazing and we really appreciate the recognition for the project. Well, congratulations, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. And the National Jury have also awarded the Sir Zelman Cowan Award for Public Architecture to Anzac Memorial Centenary Extension by Johnson Pilton Walker with the Government Architect New South Wales. The Centenary Extension has provided the Anzac Memorial with much needed exhibition and education facilities and reasserted its prominence in Sydney's Hyde Park 
with a new forecourt and water cascade, a tribute to the 1930s vision of the memorial. The extension looks beyond the brief to transform a subterranean extension into an integrated visitor experience. The project fulfills both traditional and contemporary architectural demands, reconnecting visitors with the Anzac spirit of collaboration and community in a living memorial fit for the 21st century. Congratulations, Johnson Pilton Walker with the Government Architect, New South Wales. And we were also able to visit the Anzac Memorial the other day and hear from Caroline McInnes, Director of the Office for Veteran Affairs and inaugural Veteran Artist in Residence at the Memorial, Corey Rinaldi, who both knew only that this project had been shortlisted. Even though these type of memorials portray massive loss, it, it doesn't feel like it here. Not once have I walked in here and felt sad. I feel happy to be here, very proud of you know, what's been achieved here. Richard Johnson at one point said, you know, he was the architect of the non-building because in fact, it couldn't be a statement about itself. It was a respectful addition to a beautiful and deeply meaningful memorial built by the people of New South Wales. This part here would be the part I love the most. You know, and even more so when it's raining, you know, it just, it has a total different atmosphere in here. This oculus was such an important element for the architect and really hard fought for. It was championed by our RSL trustee in particular who said, well, we fought in the mud and the rain. A little bit of rain falling through the ceiling is nothing, you know? And it connects entirely to the original Anzac Memorial. So it has that great sense of this is what it's about. And then around the walls, we have 1,701 locations across the state that acknowledge the places that people enlisted from. Where I'm painting, if I'm having a moment where I don't think I'm achieving my goal. I can just sort of look out here and I can see people looking at all the soils and the looks on their faces, they've just got smiles. And they always try and look for their, their town on the wall or they go along and look around the actual ring here to find, oh, my, my great grandfather was at Lion Pine. Or, you know, there's always some type of connection or reaction. I'm very proud that it's involved a large number of New South Wales children, community, veterans, and, and I think that's what's made it such a beautiful project is the love that's been poured into every element of it. And I'm joined now by Paul von Rattingen, Richard Johnson, and Matteo. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You've kept us waiting. <laughs> we, are, yes. we, are, we are very excited, I assure you. We are, we are completely thrilled. Well, look, this is a great project and of course, you know, it was a delight for us to be able to visit it and, you know, have the conversation. Obviously, a lot didn't make it into that edit there, including the tremendous collaboration um, that you enjoyed with the artist Fiona Hall. Um, would you like to comment first on, on that and how it um, has made this such a fantastic public project? Well, I think, I think public projects that involve um, uh, really interesting artists have a richer dimension to them, and particularly one that, that has such a brief as this one. It's a very loved building, um, and the original building that we extended was really a very strong collaboration between the artist Rainer Hoff and the architect Dellert, and we wanted to carry on that tradition. So very early in, in the process, we went through a selection process and, and picked Fiona Hall and we never once regretted that decision. She brought such great insight and dimension to the project, um, and it's much richer in all ways because of her involvement. And I, I should also say that um, this was a great collaboration with the New South Wales Government Architects yeah. Office, led by Peter Poulet at the time, mm -hmm. but they were involved with us right from the beginning, and they're involved particularly in the heritage aspect of the project. And um, that collaboration also is important. We had, we had really great 
consultants who, who brought great innovation to very challenging aspects of the, of the project. It's built in a very difficult site, um, underground, um, and um, right next to a heritage building with great sensitivity and, and a great experienced and skillful builder. So all of those, uh, I think the brief from Carolyn, as you saw, such a committed and inspiring client, the brief was, was so inspiring that everybody involved in the project and our great team here um, brought their best to it. And um, that it's been a joy to be involved in the project. Yeah, we have we have actually sitting here generations of architects collaborating on this project. And I think that's one of the great things about the practice of architecture that we can do that. We can share with youth and with uh, middle age and older age and across our team here those ideas. And it really everyone here has had such a strong input into that building. And as Caroline said, there's a great deal of love. I think it's a deceptively simple building, um, but of course they require the most effort. And uh, from the contractors to the tradesmen to our, our uh, collaborating engineers, and particularly to our team and the government architect, it's just been brilliant, total joy. And uh, I do have to say that Caroline singled out Matteo's outstanding detailing of the concrete in this project. <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed a few shots of the concrete there because we were also very taken with it. Um, but I do have to sort of single that out for comment. <laughs> um, but the broad. Thank, thank, thank you, Caroline, and thank you, the Institute. I'm sort of thrilled for this award. Thank you. Uh, and Richard, I do need to ask do you remember saying that you were the architect of the non building? Because that is quite the quote. Well, to be honest, um, I, I may have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, the sentiment I know is right. The, 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 the fact that we didn't, we didn't yeah. want what we did to, to make a statement. Um, I think the, the challenge was you know, to extend the building um, in a contemporary way to add new facilities, to give it a, a new contemporary life, but at the same time to complete Dellett's vision that, that was from the 1930s. So this balance between respect for the past, but, but commitment to the present and the future was always in our mind right through the project. And in fact, it was one of the joys of the project. Well, look, congratulations to everyone involved. And I know there was a tremendous range of stakeholders who gave to this project. Um, and it is truly an outstanding result, not just for the people of New South Wales, but the people of Australia. So congratulations once again. Thank you very much. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Well, that brings the 2020 National Architecture Awards to a close. I'd like to congratulate all the winning practices this evening, your clients and collaborators, and everyone involved in these exceptional projects. And I'd also like to thank every practice that entered the awards program in this most unusual year. It has been an absolute pleasure to see your projects, to speak with many of you across Australia and around the world, and to celebrate your important work. And of course, if you'd like to revisit any of this year's live streamed awards announcements, they're all available on the Institute's YouTube channel. I'd like to thank the Institute's corporate partners for your support of the awards program and for being part of the streams this year. It's been great to have you on board. Now, if you've received a commendation or award this evening, the Institute will be sending out your certificates shortly, so keep an eye out for those. And of course, the awards edition of Architecture Australia will be out very shortly, including the full jury citations, so keep an eye out for that too. You can also find out more about all of the awards entrants by visiting the Institute's website. I'd like to thank you for joining me, take care and enjoy your evening. You've been watching the 2020 National Architecture Awards, proudly supported by Bluesco, Brickworks and Dulux.
Lysart, Fielders, and Bondor, Built Environment Channel, Planned Cover, and Architecture Media.